G'day. It's time to do a weird and wonderful PSA for anybody who uses the Elgato Stream Deck. And perhaps, like me, you recently had to reinstall the software for it, and you suddenly realized that the functionality you once had is not the same anymore. So, what's my beef? My beef is that Elgato is using some very clever marketing strategies to try and get me to buy more things. And I hate companies that have that kind of behavior because I find it very manipulative and I don't enjoy that. If I've purchased a product, I've bought it because I thought it was valuable and I don't really appreciate then being forced into creating an account in order to continue using something that I've had for many years and now no longer does what I needed to do out of the box. So the problem that I have with Stream Deck software is that I use it for OBS. OBS is my streaming um, program of choice. I've used others. And at the moment, what I'm doing, I, I use OBS to record YouTube's content, <laughs> all the YouTube content that I create. <laughs> I, I use it for when I'm streaming, when I stream every once in a blue moon. Uh, my life is very busy. Uh, but what I've found now with the new version of the software is it comes with only Streamlabs out of the box. And I have a problem with that because you notice on their website, this is the homepage of their website, I don't see a Streamlabs. Is this a Streamlabs logo? No, that's the that's the Elgato logo. Is is this a Streamlabs? No, that that's that's an old Twitter logo. I'm pretty sure they've changed their logo, haven't they? They call themselves like B or something like that. Now. Uh, oh, there's a Twitch logo. Okay, not sure what this one is. Oh, there's a YouTube. Oh, look, there's OBS front page. Hmm. I mean, it's an old picture. It's got an old logo for a company that doesn't exist anymore. So maybe, okay, maybe they just haven't updated this and and they do think that Streamlabs is more important. What the? Okay, so OBS is first in your list and then you've got Streamlabs. So here we've got below the fold and above the fold, the first two things that a person sees when they go to your website. Can you notice I'm a little bit passionate about this? When the first thing a person sees when they go to your website is support for OBS, and yet you don't have it out of the box. Now, why is this a problem? This is a problem because if you want to add it, it's not the old plugin system, which was all inbuilt. You could just switch to the, the plugins tab and then you could pick the ones that you want. And it was great. Now you have to use the marketplace. So if you want OBS, you have to create a marketplace account. And not only that, when they take you to the marketplace, do you notice here, there's no OBS, nothing on the front page. So they make it as inconvenient as possible so that you are forced to scroll through and get eyeballs on all the content that you have no interest in. So I've got to physically search for OBS and I find OBS and I think, oh, great, here it is. This is exactly what I want. Bar rate is also a really good one if you haven't, uh, if you do still use the Elgato software. Uh, can't recommend them enough. So I go here and then I say, okay, I'm going to get it. Excellent. I can just download this as a file. Yes. Yes. I can just download this. Oh, we've got to wait. No. I cannot just download this. I have to create an account. I have to give them my email. I have to give them my password. Not only that, they also want to know what my currency is and, you know, all that information that is purely marketing driven. And I don't appreciate that kind of behavior from a, a company, especially a company that I've used for many, many years. I find it manipulative and that immediately puts me off. I'm just, I, I don't know if it's a generational thing, but I'm really sensitive to that kind of and I notice more and more companies are doing that and it just, it immediately puts me off and it actually, it makes me a disloyal company, uh, customer for them, which I'm sure they don't care about because I've just got one product. <laughs> they won't be sorry to see me go. But anyway, so why am I going on about this? Because recently I had to change to, I had to change. I was forced, I was held at gunpoint and said, you must change because I'm not impressed with Windows anymore, calling it Windows AI. 
and I've decided to make the jump to Linux. So in my journey into learning Linux, because I'm new to it as of this year, and there are obviously problems when you've got programs and you've got hardware. That was one of the things that always prevented me from making the switch because I don't have Linux versions of a lot of things like the Elgato Stream Deck software is Windows only. I don't know if they have Mac support. Wouldn't be surprised if they didn't because you've got to pay for to anything development side for Mac. You've got to pay for licenses. And I'm sure Elgato is like, oh, no, we could save money. We don't have to pay. Um, <laughs> I'm a little bit bitter. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, I've also got a GoXLR, um, TC Helicon, which doesn't have um, Linux support. There's a lot of things that is you have to do it in a janky way on Linux. So there was always a concern for mine. However, I have been pleasantly surprised by this little company right here, BitFocus. Um, and their program called Companion. This is, in my opinion, superior to the Elgato Stream Deck software. It is uh, designed for professional productions and presentations, so it, it hooks into hardware that I don't even know what it is. I see it in the list of things, and I have no idea what that stuff does, uh, but it plugs into everything, including OBS. It's no problem. It's free. Um, you do obviously need to sign in for something, which you might then say, oh, but here's then why, why are you upset about giving your details to this little company? But you, you, you're not upset about this company, but you are upset about giving to Elgato. It's because Elgato is manipulative. This is just a small little company who says, you don't even need to give us, you know, any money. We're going to give this to you for free because we think it's really useful. It's created by people who are passionate about what they do. You know, it's a small indie company, should we say. Anyway, this has been absolutely fantastic. I'll give you a quick uh, glimpse of, this is just me setting it up. I haven't spent a lot of time uh, getting my Stream Deck set up because at the moment I'm, I'm still trying to get Linux working for a lot of things. I can't get it working for gaming. Oh, the last nail in the Windows coffin is gaming on Linux, and I swear to God, I will figure it out eventually. But for now, I've got to, I've got to use it in both a little bit of Windows and a little bit of mostly Linux. But um, yeah, anyway, I digress. So I've got, I've got the old Stream Deck, so mine's got 15 buttons. When you first see the software and you go to the admin dashboard, you'll, you'll probably have like the, I think it's the the largest Stream Deck, however many buttons they have. And then you can add your own buttons in. I think normally it sort of looks something like this. Um, so you've got, you know, it comes with a, an up button and a down button. You can use those buttons to switch between the pages. So you notice you got 99 pages, got 99 pages, but a bitch ain't one. And I've got, at, well, I've added a few little things. I've customized a little bit, trying to see what I want to do. Um, I don't have an icon on this button because I have actually got a little bit of burn in happening on that button on my stream deck because it's been the same button for probably like four years now and it's got to a point where it is finally starting to burn in. I'm not quite at the point where I need to replace my stream deck but I can tell you when I have to I am not buying another one because yeah not happy Elgato. Um so what have I got on here? I've got a, a few buttons just to handle the stream, uh, my Twitch stream, basically. So I've got a button here called Hider. This is in case I've got to do something and I need to obfuscate it, like if I've got to, I don't know, enter a password, you know, that kind of stuff. And you don't want to put it on your, your stream, so you just hide the screen. So this then triggers a uh, in my OBS scene, which I've called stream, and I have a source called Hider, and then I can toggle it. So I press the one button to show and the same button to hide. You can also set a delay if you want to. So maybe you push the button and then you wait for two seconds and then it does something. Um, so when I uh, press this button, I can test it here. So when I test this, you're going to see a massive koala on the screen. There it is. And I click it again and it goes away. So You'll notice maybe, maybe not so much with this one, but we'll, we'll show you this one because this, this overlay is a little less uh, obfuscating. So when I press the button, have a look at this and you'll see that the color changes and you can customize this. 
So I can do whatever I want. I can have what a text I like. I can change the color. I have it go green when that scene is active, just because sometimes, you know, you go into an AFK screen and then you forget when you come back and then somebody says, you still got your AFK screen, wrong, wrong scene. You know? <laughs> These are very helpful people that I always mock when they tell me that I've done something wrong because I'm defensive. <laughs> but there's like, the, so the button, you can have a bright green to just sort of scream at you and say, no, you've got the wrong scene, you dumbass. So you know, that's very useful. And then I've got, you know, other buttons for other things as well. So I've only got <laughs> the four buttons so far. Um, oh, no, no, wait, I do lie. I do have another button. Um, are you ready for it? I'm going to, oh, let me show you what oh, I should show you from here, shouldn't I? Uh, this is my favorite pop-up of all time. Fantastic. So I can organize things. So I do a lot of pop-ups on my stream, you know, just sort of, uh, I guess it's the Gen X version of memeing where we just have <laughs> scenes from movies and stuff. That's that's my my thing that I've always done. So I can have all of my different pop-ups on here, but the fact that I've got so many pages and it's so convenient to just sort of switch between them. Um, but you will notice also if I go back to the AFK screen here, so if I um, don't click on anything, I'm going to push the button on my Stream Deck itself and it does the same behavior, you know, so the button goes green. Um, it's a little bit hard to see, isn't it? Because I've got my overlay. Anyway, um, actually I can very, very quickly, let me, let me, let me do this. And then when I push the button, there you go. So you, you can see the text is appearing here. I've just got rid of the, the background. So then the button goes green, turns off, and you can customize all of that. It's fantastic. So this, I'm actually going to use BitFocus Companion on the Windows side as well. So when I am streaming games, and I can't do that on Linux yet, I'm going to be using this. I'm going to uninstall the Stream Deck software itself because screw them. Manipulative business practices, I am not a fan of. Anyway, that's my rant. If you have survived the 12 minutes of it, congratulations. You don't get anything for it, but I guess you get a little bit of knowledge, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe you can go forth and help a fellow streaming friend or a non-fellow streaming friend. Maybe you're streaming your favorite streamer. Let them know BitFocus Companion is an alternative if they use the Yogato Stream Deck. And uh, it comes highly recommended from Hist because I'm sure they care about that. <laughs> but anyway, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for the company, most importantly. Whatever it is that you're doing, I hope it goes well. And you are taking care of yourself and those around you, as always. I will see you when I see you. And not a second before. Goodbye.